There's no question we can use help when it comes to curing cancer. We need all the strategies that we can, both from the mainstream of medicine as well as from complementary and alternative medicine. And once in a while, something comes along that offers great promise, and I want to tell you about that today. It's, a, it's, a, it's an herb, a Chinese herb called artemisinin. And it's been around for thousands of years, and it's been rediscovered in the last 30 or 40 years and brought back into clinical practice. It's used for malaria and it's used for the treatment of cancer. In fact, there is a, a drug that's out, that's approved by the FDA for its use in the treatment of malaria. It happens to be something that's safe, that's a chemotherapy. It's easy to use because it's just in pill form taken a couple times a day. It's inexpensive and it works on all cancers. What more could you ask for? And yet it hasn't found its way into the mainstream and largely because we don't have a lot of communication between the mainstream oncologists and from people who practice complementary and alternative medicine. And as we all know, that needs to be improved. That situation needs to become one that's more collaborative. And of course, we need to legalize it as well. Legalize that we do things besides chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery in the practice of medicine as we're treating cancer. Because in the state of California, as in some others, it's a felony to try anything except for surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. Fortunately, California Citizens for Health is doing some group now under the direction of Frank Cooney to, to, do, to make a difference, to make a change, so that we can repeal that law and be able to begin to do more integrative practice. Now let's look a little bit at, about what artemisinin does. It's a very inter interesting uh, drug that works and takes advantage of the fact that cancer cells and infected cells accumulate iron. So they have an affinity for it and actually tends to make bacteria and also makes cancer cells grow. So when they, can, they sequester this iron, they have more of it than other tissues do, other normal tissues. So when you look at, say, a leukemia cell, you may have like a thousand times more iron in it, or a breast cancer cell may have 15 times more iron in it than other cells that are uh, like themselves but not cancerous. And what happens with the, in the case of artemisinin is that when it comes into the body, it's sequestered and it comes into the cell. When iron is there in large amounts, it causes a release of two oxygen molecules that form free radicals that are so powerful that they kill the cell. This doesn't happen in normal cells. It only happens in cells that sequester a lot of iron. So all of a sudden we have a treatment here that has a remarkable potential, at least in theory, to doing some big things to be able to kill cancer cells without toxicity to the person who's taking it. That's a revolutionary change that we should be looking at. We need studies sponsored by the National Institutes of Health that can look at that. And I'm hoping that sometime that will happen soon. In the in vitro studies, which means in the test tube studies that have been done that look at the effect of artemisinin on cancer cells, what they have found is that it's pretty effective in, in, in killing those cells. In fact, with breast cancer cells, about 28% of the cells are gone within about 16 hours if they're cancerous. And if you add iron to that, uh, that, that uh, combination, it's more like 98% of the cells are gone in about 16 hours. So that's pretty powerful treatment. In the case of leukemia, in only eight hours, about 100% of the cells that are cancerous are destroyed. Now, some doctors have a concern about using iron uh, along with artemisinin. And the reason for that is, is because what we don't want to do is cause those reactions to occur in normal cells. And while that's a concern, that hasn't been shown to be a, a problem. Uh, and yet, because cancer cells tend to accumulate iron and infected cells tend to accumulate iron, the fear is that it could propagate the cancer or the infection as well. So that's something that we're going to have to probably wait on, although in a case that's really serious where somebody's tried every possible treatment that there is, from one point of view, uh, and that's the fact that it's an FDA-approved drug, you could use it as a off-label use uh, and 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 still have an effect, but still those laws that are strict that regulate uh, what you can do in cancer therapy, like in the state of California, need to be repealed. Now, artemisinin works in just about every kind of cancer, whether it be a prostate or a breast or colon or even tongue or even some sarcomas, which are notoriously difficult to treat. 
We know that there are three different forms of artemisinin. Uh, you can have either artemisinin itself or something called, art, called artesunate or artemether. Uh, they can be taken orally or by suppository. They should be taken in, in pulse doses, which means it should be on for a few days and off for a few days because the intestinal tract tends to not absorb it so well if you take it for long periods of time. And then above all, we need to know that it's safe. And in 4,000 people who have been treated with artemisinin, we have found that the safety profile is shockingly good. Sometimes that's what you see when you use natural products, as, as in the case of artemisinin. So we have something to look at here that could be a consideration in anybody who's gone through standard therapy uh, using surgery, radiation, or chemotherapy, had a very poor result, and maybe are in, in the process of dying within a short period of time, therapies like this or these should be considered because they may be something that could save lives. And there are lots of anecdotal cases that are very interesting that show exactly that.